everything I had He tore it all apart But baby, don't you touch my scarred guitar What's up guys, my name's Sean And if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar now hang on a minute here. Now I want to show you something really cool. You see this sticky back tape right here? You are not going to believe what I'm fixing to put it on. Check it out. Now before I show you what I got for you, I got to tell you something. Now I've been making guitars about 11 years. From scratch, with no experience whatsoever. See, my wife bought me a guitar kit for my birthday one year. And after I saw it all taken apart, because I'd never seen one all taken apart before, I said, man, I can make that. So I went down to Home Depot and bought a couple tools. Then I went out in my garage and made the worst guitar you've ever seen in your entire life. But after doing it for so long, I've realized there's two things about making guitars that I'd rather a machine do for me. One is cut the fret slots, two is radius the fretboard. Now we already made a saw to cut the fret slots with, but what are we going to do about the radius thing? That is what brings us to this. Now at this point in time, I'd like to direct your attention to this Grizzly G0716 10 inch radius sander. About an $800 machine, probably $850 when it's all said and done. Good machine, works like a champ, it's amazing. But all it does is flatten boards out. And I wanted to use it for a different purpose. See, Grizzly makes a radius sander for the fretboard. You guys remember that thing? I had it. I sold it because it was trash to me. I couldn't use it, nobody there could tell me how. I couldn't find a blacksmith to come over and set it up for me just didn't work for me so I had my friend Billy take the drum out of this thing and make me four of these I got three more coming I got a nine and a half inch a 12 inch and a 16 inch coming now this is a 20 because you know we wanted to do the flattest one that I normally get requested to try before you know going too crazy but I know this works but I'm going to show you how right now like I said, I know this works already because my friend Jim and I already gave it a roll to see that it did. Now what I did was I cut some of this stuff up, this round paper that I used for my disc sander. You know, the one you saw me shape the neck with? And then I cut that into some strips and put that on there. And it worked good, but it just wasn't right. Now the way that I cleaned that off after I took the sandpaper off was I just took a soapy Brillo pad, stuck a towel under there and turned it on. And stuck it right on there and it cleaned it right up. But we're going to put some other sandpaper on it that I got now. This is for skateboards. But it's still sandpaper. The reason I got this type of tape is because it's super sticky. And the other thing I really liked about this one is that it wasn't like this. You see that hat got all the dirt in it? Because it doesn't have a paper backing on it. You actually have to peel the paper backing off this. And I think that's good because it keeps the dust out in your shop. Now I'm just going to measure one strip here. about the length I want it and then I got a template I can just go down and chop me a bunch of these off I want to see how many strips it takes and then I'm going to cut them again in half but I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. They say you know the tape's good when it's hard to get the back off. Well, I got to tell you, <laughs> that sure did stick on there a lot better than that other tape did. Now I'm going to leave a little space in between these so sawdust can escape. That's four of them. We've got four more to go. Probably going to need one extra one. Put a little wear and tear on your fingers, won't it? 
I'm going to stop right here for a second because I wanted to show you the bolts inside the drum because the shaft has a notch in it. And you take these four bolts off right here, those four big ones right there. There's two there and two on the bottom. And then those two and those two. And you can take that off with those two bolts there. Just loosen them. It slides right off. And we'll be putting those other ones in. Pretty cool, huh? So I took my razor knife. I split a piece of duct tape down the middle. I'm just going to wrap it on these ends just for safe keeping to keep that sandpaper from flying off in my face. If it does. I'm not saying it will. Just want to make sure. Just a small safety precaution. It ain't going to hurt nothing. But that's 80 grit paper. That thing will probably do 20, 30 fretboards before it wears out. This may seem like a lot of work, but <laughs> but this is nothing compared to the dust you would suck if you were radius and 20 fretboards by hand. And this is going to make them perfect every time within minutes. Let me demonstrate. I'm not trying to remove material, per se, I'm just trying to radius it. Boy, it needs a dust cover for sure. Man, are you ready for this? Perfectly radiused fretboard. Two passes. Let's do another one. We'll try this old zebra wood here. See how it chews in there. One pass. There's two. Huh. Two passes, perfectly radius freaking fretboard. That is absolutely perfect. And it'll do it every time you saw it, two passes. Now when you really think about it, it's pretty crazy that some guy in Florida in his garage had to come up with that machine, huh? You'd think that'd be available to the public, but it ain't. Just look at that perfect radius. It's not a joke. It really ain't. <laughs> now you can call me crazy if you want to, but I'm thinking that's just beautiful. Look at that, man. <laughs> hey, look, I'm done gloating, but give me a thumbs up. <laughs>